speaking of apologetics, that'll be kind of the main topic of what we'll talk sure. about today. Um, particularly, we're going to talk about one specific part, and it's it's really based on a book by Carl Truman. Yeah. He wrote uh, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self, and then yeah. Strange New World is kind of the concise yeah. Reader's Digest version of <laughs> yeah, that. Right. Um, so his premise is culture is changing at a breakneck speed, and things that were completely absurd for my grandparents and your grandparents, yeah. like I'm a woman trapped inside of a man's body, things like that that would just be completely absurd are now very normal, very uh, very commonplace, mm -hmm. and, and people just accept it. Mm -hmm. You look around and you just look at all these changes and all these just radical ideas popping up everywhere. Uh, in Truman's book, he, he says there is kind of a unifying piece underneath mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the idea of this modern self. Mm -hmm. um, how, um, how, is, um, how has the modern self kind of been defined mm -hmm. in our culture today? And uh, what are some of the implications of that? That's a big question. <laughs> um, so I will recapitulate and say a lot of things that you said that you said uh, really well. Um, yeah, Carl Truman came out with this book, and it was my first year here. And so I'm um, just to give you my own backstory on this book. I uh, decided I would pick up the book in the middle of you know building all these classes and everything. And I realized after reading it, I was like, my goodness, this is like this has to be in the curriculum. It's just mm -hmm. such a good book. Yeah, and like you said, he writes this uh, first book, Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. 400 pages, don't recommend it to many, never finished it, it was it was rough reading, but it di I did learn, right, his basic his basic thesis there, um, and again, to rest restate what you said, his question that he's asking is, how did it come to be this mm -hmm. way, right? right, looking at our culture, transgenderism, you know, people who are deferring to their children on just things like where to go to school, or, you know, what sports to be in, or anything like that, which wouldn't have made sense to our prior generation, or even something as simple as, I go to this church because it makes me feel this way, right? right? As opposed to I go to this church because it aligns with objective truth or something like that. Right. He's trying to figure out that, right? And it's like, well, how do you figure out that? And uh, again, this question is so deep because what he does in that book is he shows that it's multiple strands of thought. So he goes into uh, William Blake, for example, and the Romantic era. And one of the things that um, was defined by the Romantic era in like the 19th century, 18th century a little bit, um, was this idea that there's this inner self with the feelings, and then you have this outer self, mm -hmm. right? And this inner self is the true you, and the outer self is not the true you, right? And, right? and so one of the things that expressive individualism, that's the term that he gives to this philosophy that he gets from Charles Taylor, right? He says that I must defer ultimately, my ethic, what I'm supposed to do in life is ultimately to defer to my inner feelings regardless of what the facts say, mm -hmm. regardless of what my body says, regardless mm -hmm. of what my society says, even more so, right, he takes an idea from Freud, society really is causing me to repress my inner self, mm -hmm. right? So not only is it that I have to define myself against society, it's that society is against me, right? right. I ha I'm in this, this war against my true inner self, society's over here fighting against me. And he says that, and, you, and then you get Marx, right? And so what I need to do then is to fight against the society, and the society is owed to tell me and affirm my inner self, right? Mm -hmm. So this, again, so to break that down a little bit, it's a view of the human self, right? The human person that says, the real me are the feelings on the inside. And what I need to be doing in order to be a good person or a right person is to be truly expressing that. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do and you need to do and you need to do is submit to my own right. inner feelings, right? right? So that's where we're going to start to have a really huge like problem with Christian theology because in Christian theology, the human person, though still rational, still uh, good as to form, right, is totally depraved as to the direction of that right, form. Right. And so we would make an argument that you don't have a right to define yourself. That's God's right. Nor do you have the capacity to define yourself, <laughs> right. right? And and you see this. I mean, I don't need to appeal to the scriptures to get the point, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you have 94, you know, genders and language that's breaking and all these things, we can tell that you do not have the power <laughs> to redefine yourself. Right. And so that's that's where we're going to make a contention. So right. That's a lot. But right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, maybe stay in the point sure. of expressive individualism. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the term that Truman uses yeah. to kind of define what's happening uh, with the modern self. 
Uh, maybe uh, if you can define that a little bit more specifically, or what sure. what exactly is he talking about with that with that term? Okay, yeah, I'll give a couple facets. He's going to use that term to. This is why it's so hard to talk about a conglomeration of ideas, mm -hmm. right? One of those things, though, is that my identity, who I really am, is not defined by the facts. It's not defined by anything external. It's defined by my inner feelings and perceptions, mm -hmm. right? The second thing is, is that I have a duty and a right to make everybody else submit to that inner definition, right? And then you get the third point. That means that society is supposed to submit themselves to my own personal preferences, thoughts, and feelings. But really at the core, it's that the person has the right and the ability to define themselves. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's everything else I think you can deduce from that. Right. So. Yeah. And there's that the term that's been thrown a lot of, around a lot is authenticity. Uh, I yes. need to be authentic. Yes. Yeah. And that's and that's where that's coming right. from, right? Right. And that the society at large, as you mentioned, is repressing that yeah. and they actually need to embrace that from yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So so the the only sin within the system, I mean he's he doesn't quote this guy in this book, but it's coming from a guy named Jean Paul Sartre, right? And Sartre said, the only real sin is that you don't live out your authentic choice of who you are, mm -hmm. right? And so, mm -hmm. and we hear this all the time. Christians too say these things, like you need to be true to yourself. Right. And it's like, oh no, do you? like, yeah, do, yeah do, you, <laughs> do you really want to be true to the, like, I hope you're true to who you are in Christ. Like that would be, if that's your true self and that's what you mean, that's great. But what people, people do not mean that. They mm -hmm. normally mean like, you need to do what makes you happy. You need to be true to yourself. And really what they're doing is not fully, but partially and really evidencing how much they've been influenced by expressive individualism and how much they make their decisions based upon what I feel like I should be doing and how I define myself and how I'm being really authentic right. as opposed to defining themselves by union with Christ or uh, the historic Christian tradition or the scriptures or something that we would you know, argue is true mm -hmm. or simply just general revelation and the facts, right? Right. I'm... I have two hands. I'm supposed to work, right? right? I have, you know, I have a body. I'm supposed to be, you know, doing yeah. stuff in this body. So uh, that's really yeah, where we're going to. Yeah. Continue to agree. But yeah, authenticity is. Right. Key. Yeah. The key word. Thank you yeah. for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You've talked about a little bit, but uh, let's talk about why that's so dangerous and maybe make it a little more personal. Why it's so dangerous for those of us in the Christian community? Like it's not something mm -hmm. that we're dealing with out there. Yeah it's very much apparent here and and you're talking about it with with our own kids here at annapolis yeah. too yeah so the first thing i'm tempted to say <laughs> that makes it so dangerous is that gone unrepented of it will lead you to hell mm -hmm. right i mean like it is literally like the philosophy of satan and we can get into that you know earlier or later but more practical manifestations it's like you go to something as simple as what where am i going to go to college right and the the standards that are normally used for that question are Maybe I want to make money, but it's also, you know, how am I going to be happy, right? It's not primarily governed by the question, what's going to manifest the kingdom of God the most mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, I'll give you just a couple of ways that this has expressed itself. So in our choices of where we go to church, right? The early, I mean, even this idea of the choice to go to church is kind of a modern phenomenon, right? right. Like you normally go, you know, wherever you're, you know, you're stationed. Um, but when we choose to, like where we go to church, people normally, what I hear is, I like the music there, or I, which, which, okay, music's good, music's important, right? Yeah. But they'll normally say, it makes me feel like I'm worshiping, right? So they don't take an objective standard, uh, which is something along the lines of the doctrine, uh, the liturgy, or something like that. It'll be a subjective preference, and I even hear this sometimes, which, I mean, I, I cringe every time I hear it, uh, it's how I worship. Mm -hmm. And that is literally subjectivism, relativism, expressive individualism, how you worship. Well, what about what God says worship is? Right. What about, you know, so... So there's one worship um, education is another huge place where this expresses itself that that the, the when you're talking about a child right and the child or or when you're an adult right and the child makes like the ultimate decision rests with them that kind of an idea well yeah. I don't I don't hope not right because they're five you know or <laughs> yeah. they're four and they don't really you know they're not at that age and even adults nowadays right it's like I hope not you know um, so I know I'm brought painting a broad brush mm -hmm. but that's how broad it goes I mean expressive individual I was talking to the the, the students the other day about this. And it was at a Christian college, and they had a billboard that said, you know, here to make you the best you or something like that. And it was like, in Christian context, I'm like, yeah, I, I, would, I would love for you to be the best you in Jesus, right, following in him, right? <laughs> and like, you know, conforming yourself to the ideals of God's law and all that. But that, I don't think that's what they mean. I think mm -hmm. they mean like, you do what makes you happy. You know, uh, everybody owes it to you. You got to, you know, this kind of a thing. Let's talk about 
we're in this kind of quagmire of expressive individualism. Is there any hope? Is there any kind of way forward, particularly for the Christian community, to kind of push our way through there and to find that beacon of light to follow and get out of the quagmire that we're in? So I, I think there's a lot of hope. Um, I, I talk to the students in apologetics and I say, you have the blessed opportunity and privilege of living in a place where the contrasts are so great that the Christian truth shines forth so much more brightly, mm. right? So when I was growing up, it was like everybody was a cultural Christian, which is its own blessing, right? That's that's something I would rather have, frankly. But right. um, I had the non-blessing, I guess you could say, of not mm. seeing the contrast as, as vividly. Today, our students, you know, they're growing up in a, in a culture where the distinction between you know, Christian church and non-Christian church is pretty clear, right? Mm -hmm. And then even within the churches, the distinction between, broadly speaking, classical historic churches and more churches that are moving into this expressive individualism or have moved into it and have been imbibing it for years is even clear as well. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's I yeah. guess, the, the contrast is very, very clear. Right. So so how does, is there hope? Yes, there's, there's, there's hope. Um, the hope comes from, Honestly, I think in the midst of the contrast, the hope comes ultimately from Christ, from the Word of God, from the historic Christian tradition, which speaks to these things. And there's a lot of good things that are happening right now in addition to this, right? People are being converted, right? Historic churches are going back to older creedal statements, and they're seeking to uh, bring a deeper form of Christianity that's been a part of our past. Uh, my wife, for example, she's involved in a, a ministry at an organization where they take classic works of Protestantism and translate them into modern English, right? That's one work, right? But I think that's monumental. Like, I think that's what we should be doing. And I mean, mm -hmm. and that's really what the classical school movement is partially about, right? Mm -hmm. Is we have this historic wealth of tradition and we know it's been done before where people have lived after God godly, right? There's been bad examples and good examples, right. right? And we want to bring that treasure, that gem, ultimately from the scriptures, worked its way out through Christian tradition into the you know hearts and minds of our students. So is there hope? Yeah, I mean, why would we even be here if there wasn't right. hope? There's tons of hope, you know? Like, <laughs> like I mean, yeah, why, we have kids if there wasn't hope. Why would we do that? Like, there, yeah. there is so much hope in the gospel. And so I, yeah, frankly, just thinking about it, I'm like filled with hope. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm super hopeful. As, at the same time, it's like we have the, the resources in the gospel to look, look at God's law, look at the culture and say, nope, right? And mm -hmm. look at our hearts and say, expressive individualism here? Yeah, because that's literally the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so mm -hmm. yeah, so there, there is hope, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, I hope I've made that clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. really why we're here, right? We're training the next generation to yeah. be kingdom builders, and we yeah. know that Christ has overcome the world, right? Yeah. We're, we're not we're not in a losing battle. We, nope. we win, right? We do. So, yeah. but we have to be armed and trained. Right. You know, it, it is a mm -hmm. battle. Mm. And before, you know, like you mentioned, the the battle lines weren't quite as clear. I think culturally Christians were a little more lax and relaxed, yep. but now it's time to rise up, to stand, to fight, yep. to advance. But we we know we win, right? Yeah. Right, so right. there is a lot of hope to, yeah. you know, when we look ahead to the future and, and it brings us great joy when we equip right. the next generation and they're, yes. they're taking hold by faith his word and then marching forward so yeah we begin on sunday right victory right. day right? right jesus rose right it didn't end at the cross he rose <laughs> right so we bear our crosses but it's like we ultimately rise victorious yeah yeah Amen. so the book to recommend a strange new world that's right that's yep. right that's yeah. the reader's digest version and if you want to get to yeah. take the deep dive do the other one good but, luck yeah. <laughs> i recommend it but good luck yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 well thank you patrick appreciate your time god bless you thank yep. you too